Hi guys. Okay, so today I'm going to do a video that's a little bit different for me. I'm going to do my top five kind of tips or tricks like beauty wise that I do. Now a few of these things I have talked about in previous videos. So if I have, I'll link them in the bottom bar. But I'm just going to sum them up in one video now in case it's from an old video that you haven't seen. All right. First thing, this is probably my favorite thing that I do. And I have a whole video on this. It's called How to Full and Fabulous Lashes. I'll put it below. Okay, what it is, it's the heated blow dryer trick. Now, what I do is I take my bare lashes, okay, I put my mascara on, then I take my blow dryer, hold it onto my eyelash curler for maybe five to eight seconds, and then I curl my, curl my lashes and I pump three times to each lash. And it just, it's incredible the results. I have false lashes on today, so I didn't do it. But if you watch the video, you can see the dramatic results. And I don't know, I just haven't heard that many people talk about doing this. And I don't know why. I do know people who have said they heat their eyelashes, but they always, or heat their curler, but they always do it before they put on the mascara. I don't know. It must just be me, I don't know. But I've tried what people do like in all their videos where they curl their lashes even without the heat before they put on their mascara and my lashes don't do anything. I mean, they might bend a little bit, but hardly anything at all. Like to me, it's the same thing as, I mean, it's different obviously, but as a curling iron, if you take a cold curling iron and wrap your hair up in it, when you let go of your curling, like when you let your hair go out of the curling iron, it's just going to fall straight. So I know it's a little bit different with, you know, the shape of the eyelash curler, but in my head, it's the same thing. I mean, my lashes literally, they don't do anything. So heated eyelash curler trick, try it. I'm telling you, it's amazing. Sometimes if I do it just right, I don't know what makes the difference, but my lashes will touch, like I'll feel them touch my eye, like the top of under my eyebrow somewhere. And I have normal lashes. I don't have super long lashes or anything like that. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, now this actually, I learned this from Goss Makeup Artist. I'll put his link in the bottom bar. He is incredibly talented. So if you're not subscribed to him, you should definitely check him out. He talked about the correct way to use the stippling brush, the foundation brush, like the 187 from MAC. This is the SS187 from Sigma. I know it's different numbered now, whatever. Um, and mine's dirty, yes, because I didn't wash it. So. Anyway, what he said to do the correct way and why a lot of people can get the cakey foundation look is because they're not doing this. What you're supposed to do, he says, on a clean face, moisturized, whatever, take your Fix Plus um, or your, you know, your setting spray or whatever you're using. Spray a couple sprays all over your face. Then what he did was he took his foundation, let's say it's on a little pot or, you know, a CD or whatever. Take your foundation brush, spray your foundation brush once with the Fix Plus, then take your finger or, you know, a separate foundation brush, not the one you're going to be using. Are you following? Take, so I'm going to say your finger. Take your finger, pick up some of your foundation, dab it on your face, because if you use it on your brush, your brush will soak up a lot of that product. So dab it on with your finger, and then with the brush that you just sprayed the Fix Plus, um, buff everything in the skin. And I... I do this every single day now after I watched his video. It now as far as the Fix Plus and like my makeup lasting longer, that's not a factor. I don't think this helps my makeup last any longer. It just blends everything so much nicer and it makes my like end foundation result look so much better. And I use my um, this brush is from Coastal Sense. It's the Bionic Buffer brush, I think. I use this one as well with the same technique, but it's incredible. I know a lot of makeup artists say to use a damp sponge to help blend in your foundation. I've never done that, but I assume that it's the same kind of technique. So I'm going out on a limb here, but I'm assuming maybe if you spritz your brush with water and your face with water, that it would be the same kind of deal. I'm not positive though, but yeah. So I'll put his, the link to his video on that in the bottom bar. You should definitely try the Fix Plus trick out. Okay, next thing is for hair. This is... Um, a at-home conditioning treatment. I get so many people asking me, what deep conditioner do I need? This and this and this and this. Okay, yes, deep conditioners are great. You know, the $30 bottle ones, tub, tubs of ones, they're fantastic. But if you don't have the money to spend on that, this is just a really great at-home thing. Okay, this is 
an item that I have, okay? It's called the um, Hair Therapy Wrap. What it is, it's this crazy looking turban. I put it on in the past video. I'm not gonna do it now. You put it on, you, well first, I guess, they have these gel packets that are on the inside. You heat these up in the microwave, and then what you do is you put your deep conditioner in, put a plastic cap on, put this on, let it set for, you know, a half an hour or whatever. It's like your own at-home spa. Because at the salon, like when people come in, same thing, I'll put the deep conditioner on them, put a plastic cap on them, and then sit them under, you know, like the heated dryer for however long, and then charge, you know, however much for it. Well, you can do this at home. Um, I forgot how much this is now, but I'll put the link to where you can get it, um, brushlove.com in the bottom bar. Okay. So, anyway, um, point is, is that what you can do is take whatever conditioner you have. I mean, obviously a deep conditioner is going to be better, but just your regular old conditioner if you want to. Shampoo your hair. You don't even have to shampoo your hair, but if you're in the shower, shampoo your hair, towel dry it really well, take your conditioner, slather it all over, especially on your ends, wrap it up, preferably in a plastic cap, because the towel just when you're twist when you're twisting your hair up in the towel, you're twisting and pulling like your wet hair, which is really delicate anyway, so it's not so good for your hair, but you know, we all do it. So preferably if you have a cap, even better if you have one of these heated turban things. Anyway, throw it up and then leave it on as long as you have. If you have a half an hour, if you have three hours, if you can do it overnight. I sleep in it overnight, but it does get kind of annoying because I can hear it rubbing. It doesn't make a mess or anything like that, but just when you hear this, like every once in a while I'd be like, oh my God. So anyway, definitely, definitely do that. And then you rinse it obviously when you're done with however long of time you want to leave it on. And it's just do that once a week, twice a week even. It's your own kind of at home conditioning treatment. All right. Fourth thing is a hair thing. This is my, I guess, signature bang trick. It's one of my most popular videos. It is the side sweat bang trick. I have a whole video on it, so I'm not going to go into extreme, extreme detail. But basically, it's my number one question is how I do my bangs and how I get them to lay over my forehead. Um, how I do it is with my trick. Normally, you think you take a blow dryer, you go where your part is, and then you blow dry your hair kind of like this. That's when your bangs are going to pop up and you're going to get what I call the rainbow bang. So. I can't do it now because mine are all like sprayed and whatever to the side. So that's what my video is for. But you want to take your bangs in the opposite direction. So if you normally part your hair, hair here, push them to the other side and blow dry with a round brush is even best. That way when they're dry, when you push them back over to the normal side you part, they'll lay over your forehead. Watch my video. You'll see it. It's much easier to see than me trying to explain it. So that's the bang trick. Okay, fourth thing. Now this is something that so many girls or guys or whoever here on YouTube talk about. And it's one of those things that I always hear, but for the longest time I never did. And it's that putting on your eyeshadow before your foundation. And I'm only talking about this because it is one of those things for me, like I just said, that I never tried because I'm like, uh, oh, whatever. It makes sense, but I just, I don't wanna, you know, get out of my routine. I wanna keep my routine. Well, the first time I did it, I'm like, oh my God, this is why we're supposed to be doing this. Mainly with dark shadow, because you know when you get your face on and then you do your eyes, especially if the eyeshadow has a lot of fallout, you're going to have like little pieces of makeup fallout all like all under your eye. And it's almost, a, it's a bear to try to get off because then you end up wiping off your concealer and it's just a mess. So for a while, I would only do that trick if I was using a super dark eyeshadow. I wouldn't necessarily do it if I was just doing, you know, like a normal everyday eye. And it was great. On a side note, another reason why I don't do it is because I hate seeing my face without foundation. So when I was getting close in the mirror and spending all this time on my eyes, just seeing like my blotchy skin would like creep me out. But I'm getting used to it now the more that I've done it. Anyway, point is, is that even on like my regular day eyes where I do a neutral eye, when I would do my eyes before and then do my foundation, my foundation looks better. And I don't, I don't know how to explain it. You're just going to have to kind of try it yourself and see. Because I never realized even like a neutral nude eyeshadow is going to have fallout. 
I mean, duh, but I guess I never paid attention to it until I tried doing it the other way around. And then now if I ever forget or I just don't feel like doing it and I do my foundation first, I notice more how I have like little specks of eyeshadow or eyeliner or even like I do my whole eye. I'll do my mascara, my eyeliner, everything because my mascara will kind of flake off sometimes, especially when I curl my eyelashes. So if you haven't tried your eyeshadow first before your foundation, try that. Oh, and I do take a little bit of my foundation and I'll rub it over my eye in my inner corners and a little bit on my outer corner before I put on, you know, my primer potion or whatever, just to take away any discoloration too. So yeah, those are my five tricks. I would love to hear yours if you want to leave them in the bottom bar. If you have any questions on any of it, let me know. And like I said, I will link to all the videos that I do have other videos for. Does that even make sense? I don't know. In the bottom bar. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. Bye.